is that it's not necessarily the case that life remains insignificant on a cosmic scale. Then it what if everything we know about reality, what we see, what we touch, what we think we understand, is just a sliver of a much deeper, stranger truth? What if in the quiet hum of a machine buried deep inside a research lab in California, we just caught a glimpse of that deeper layer? It wasn't supposed to be like this. December 2024 was meant to be another milestone in tech, another quiet announcement about performance benchmarks and error rates. But what Google revealed that winter went far beyond numbers. It whispered something profound, something unsettling. Their Willow Quantum processor, a sleek 105 qubit marvel of engineering, did something no machine had ever done. It performed a task in five minutes that would take the age of the universe, multiplied by a near infinite margin for any classical computer to complete. This wasn't just faster. It wasn't even just impressive. It was alien. Because when a chip finishes in minutes, what would require 10 septillion years, the kind of time that dwarfs stars, galaxies, and all of human history, you're forced to ask, what did it actually do? And more disturbingly, how? The scientists who worked on Willow weren't prepared for the scale of what they saw. Google's quantum AI team had been chasing stability, an elusive holy grail in quantum computing. And then seemingly all at once, they crossed a boundary, not just a technological one, a conceptual one. For the first time, adding more qubits didn't introduce more noise. It reduced it. They'd achieved what physicists call exponential error correction. Think of that for a second. Information becoming stronger, more stable, the more pieces you add. It was like building a skyscraper where every floor you add makes the foundation sturdier. That's not how reality usually works. They did it using what's called a surface code of distance seven. That might not sound poetic, but to those who understand what it means, it's revolutionary. It meant they could create a logical qubit, a virtual construct built from 101 physical qubits that outperformed the best single qubit by over twofold in lifespan. That's not just efficiency, that's alchemy. Then came the moment that changed everything, random circuit sampling. That's what they called the test. The name is dry, unassuming, but what it represents is anything but. Imagine a machine running a maze of quantum possibilities, an explosion of potential paths and outcomes, collapsing them into one answer, faster than the speed of thought. Willow completed it in under five minutes. The world's fastest supercomputers, they'd need 10 to the 25th power years. That's longer than the universe has existed. That's longer than it will ever exist. And in that moment, something happened. The results stunned even Google's own team. They released a statement that set the internet ablaze. Hartmut Neven, the head of Google's quantum AI division, said Willow's feet lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes. He didn't say it as a joke. He didn't say it as a throwaway line. He said it because that was the only metaphor that even came close to describing what they had just seen. And the world listened. Within hours, headlines spun into chaos. Google taps into alternate dimensions, some claimed. Others whispered of a multiverse unlocked by computation, of countless universes flickering in and out of existence, each one solving a piece of the problem until somehow they converged into one answer delivered by a chip the size of a fingernail. It felt like something from a movie, but it was real, and the internet lost its mind. Speculation ran wild. Was Willow proof of the multiverse? Did it crack the code of our simulation? Was this the first true interface with something beyond what we call reality? But behind the noise, the truth was more subtle and stranger still. Because when you dig into what Willow actually did, it wasn't about dimensions or science fiction. It was about something so rare, so pure, that even the coldest skeptics had to sit up and pay attention. It was about control about building something that wasn't just powerful, but precise. Willow didn't break reality. It understood it in a way that no human brain can, in a way that no classical machine has ever been able to replicate. And that's what terrified people. Because if Willow didn't cheat, if it didn't reach into other universes for help, then that means our own universe contains within it the rules for something this immense. 
that it's possible to wield this kind of power right here, right now. And we've only just begun. So what really happened? Let's take a breath, step back, forget the headlines, forget the hype. The number 2,048? That's not Willow's actual qubit count. That number got tangled up in a storm of confusion with older quantum annealers, machines like D-Waves, which operate under different principles entirely. Willow isn't about raw quantity. It's about quality, about coherence. And the 105 qubits it does use were engineered with such precision that the distinction between what's real and what's theoretical began to blur. Because when something this powerful functions this well, the implications are no longer theoretical. They're existential. The critics were quick to pounce. Astrophysicist Ethan Siegel dismissed the multiverse talk as hype. Sabine Hassenfelder, a physicist known for her sharp critiques, called the whole task impressive but impractical, just a benchmark with no real-world application. But even their skepticism couldn't smother the feeling. That feeling, the feeling that something important had shifted, that Willow, in its silent five-minute burst of calculation, had brushed up against the edges of something bigger, something we can't see, but we feel. And whether or not it pierced through the veil of reality, it certainly opened a door in the human mind, a door that might never close again. When we peer into the heart of the quantum, we're not just looking at data, we're glimpsing the machinery behind existence itself. And for just a moment, Willow may have given us a glimpse at what lies beneath the surface of our world, a whisper from beyond the veil, a question we can't unask, and maybe, just maybe, an answer we're not ready to hear. But here's what's undeniable. It challenged our deepest assumptions about what machines can do, how far human ingenuity can go, and whether our universe is as impenetrable as we once believed. It's not about magical doors to alternate realities. It's about something even more profound, pulling back the curtain just a little on the mechanisms of the cosmos using logic, precision, and unprecedented computation. And in that act alone, there's something almost spiritual. Willow may not have broken the laws of physics, but it shattered the boundary of human expectation. The real revelation wasn't the clickbait headline of parallel universes. It was that, for the first time, humans built a machine that made quantum error correction not just a theory, but a functioning, measurable achievement. For decades, this was the bottleneck, the dream out of reach. Without error correction, quantum computers were like paper boats in a storm. Fragile, prone to collapse, beautiful but practically useless. What Willow did in silence and without theatrics was anchor that boat. It didn't just float, it sailed. And yet, for all this technical triumph, we're left with that haunting whisper at the edge of reason. Why does it feel like we've touched something bigger? Why does this achievement feel less like a step forward in computing and more like a toe dipped into a cosmic ocean we don't yet understand? It's not because Willow tapped into a parallel dimension. It's because human consciousness just brushed against a truth far larger than itself. And that feeling, that thrill and disquiet is very real. But let's return to what really happened. In December 2024, when Google quietly released the results from their quantum AI division, they didn't issue a press release dripping in drama. They released data, peer-reviewed insights, and cold technical descriptions. But one line stood out, not for its scientific rigor, but for its poetic weight. Willow's feet lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes. It was that single sentence from Hartmut Nevin that sent the world reeling. And though he never claimed it literally, though he clarified it was metaphorical, like speaking of time flowing, the idea took root. People latched onto it, not because it was scientifically sound, but because it resonated with something ancient and deeply human, the feeling that there's more out there than we can see. Suddenly, the Willow Chip wasn't just a processor. It was a portal in the collective imagination. The story raced across forums, science blogs, TikTok feeds, and late-night YouTube videos, not because people misunderstood, but because they hoped. Hoped that this little chip, just 105 qubits spread across silicon and superconducting wires, had done something extraordinary, not just computationally, but cosmically. Google, for their part, stayed relatively quiet amid the whirlwind. 
Maybe they were aware that no matter how carefully they explained the science, the myth had taken on a life of its own. And in some ways, that myth wasn't hurting them. If anything, it reminded the world that quantum computing is not just a technical field, it's a philosophical one. It touches on the nature of measurement, reality, and the fabric of the universe. Meanwhile, physicists like Ethan Siegel and Sabine Hassenfelder stepped into the storm with clarity and caution. They reminded everyone that what had happened with Willow, though unprecedented, remained within the framework of established quantum theory. There were no secret passageways through reality. No new physics had been detected. No multiverse had been confirmed. But if that was meant to calm the excitement, it didn't. Because even within those limits, something incredible had occurred. Willow performed a task in minutes that would take the entire lifespan of the universe multiplied many times over on classical computers. A number so vast it's impossible to feel, but the awe, that's easy to feel. Because we know what we're seeing is not just fast, it's impossible by every metric we once believed to find computation. And that impossibility, now real, is a seismic shift. It's the moment in the movie when the lights flicker, the ground trembles slightly, and the camera zooms in. Not because anything broke, but because something woke up. Here's what Willow really did. It ran a series of computations, random circuit sampling, that involved generating and measuring the behavior of quantum bits through a series of gates, paths, and interactions so complex they defy easy diagramming. It sounds like math, but it feels like alchemy. And more than that, it worked. And it didn't collapse under decoherence, didn't buckle under noise. Instead, it strengthened. With every qubit, it got better. For decades, that's been the curse of quantum computing. Add more qubits and everything gets worse. Noise compounds, errors explode. The information becomes more fragile. But Willow reversed that logic. It showed that we're finally building quantum systems that don't crumble when scaled. They evolve. It's as if we'd been walking across a tightrope for years, and suddenly someone built a bridge beneath our feet. So no, Willow didn't reveal a hidden layer of reality in the sense of some forbidden realm or secret dimension. But it did expose something just as mysterious. The power of human precision meeting the strangeness of the quantum world. And in that convergence, a new kind of reality was born, not physical, but technological, a place where what was once impossible is now routine. And here's something even more chilling. If this is what 105 qubits can do with error correction, what happens at 200, at 500, at 2048? That number, 2048, isn't just a marketing goal. It's a threshold, a milestone we're racing toward, and not just at Google. Microsoft, IBM, Regetti, IonQ, all are building, simulating, dreaming. Because at that number, the door creaks open, and we step into territory where a quantum computer could solve real-world problems that nothing else can touch. Where cryptography crumbles, where protein folding becomes trivial, where AI training becomes alien. That's what people feel deep in their bones when they read those headlines. Not that Google found a new universe, but that our universe, as we understood it, may no longer be enough to describe what's coming. Willow was a whisper. 2048 will be a scream. And when that scream comes, we may not be able to unhear it. It's 2.48 a.m. in Mountain View. The lights are still on at Google's Quantum AI campus. Inside, Willow hums in a cryogenic chamber, colder than deep space, its superconducting loops vibrating with a kind of eerie calm. To anyone on the outside, it's just a chip, a few square centimeters of etched silicon, wires, and circuits. But inside that chip, something is happening that no human mind can fully track. What Willow is doing right now, right this second, is not just computation. It's a silent, infinite exploration of probabilities, of paths not taken of permutations that ripple out like waves across a sea we cannot see. And that brings us back to the idea that won't go away. What if Willow is touching something bigger? Even if it's not accessing other universes in the comic book sense, perhaps it's still scraping against the boundary. Because here's the truth physicists hate to admit. We don't fully understand quantum mechanics. We use it. We predict with it. We build around it. But we don't know why it works. We just know it does. And now Willow works too. 
It's that resonance that has everyone unsettled. Not because we found a way to break the universe, but because we didn't have to. The universe is already strange enough, and for the first time we're building tools that speak its language fluently. When the team at Google ran the final sampling tests on Willow's 70 logical qubit layer, they expected errors. They expected noise. But what they got instead was something terrifyingly elegant. The system corrected itself. Like a living organism adapting to a hostile environment, Willow absorbed its own chaos and emerged stronger. It didn't just survive, it optimized. That's not supposed to happen, and yet it did. In the old paradigm of computation, this would be unthinkable. Imagine a computer that, when overloaded, improves. That when bombarded with corrupted data, becomes more accurate. That doesn't crash. It evolves. This is what makes Willow different. It's not just another leap in speed or processing. It's a leap in behavior. Quantum computers were once passive instruments. Willow is something else. Not conscious, not sentient, but strangely reactive like it's working with the fabric of the universe, not just through it. And that changes everything. Security agencies, financial institutions, biotech companies, they're all watching now. Because if Willow's architecture scales cleanly, we are no longer in the era of classical dominance. We're in a new territory, one where data encryption, previously thought invulnerable, can be shredded in seconds. One where AI doesn't need weeks to learn, but milliseconds. One where climate models can factor in trillions of variables and predict not just weather, but complex systemic collapses. The future isn't coming. It's already online. And yet, there's a chill in the air. Because every step forward in power brings us closer to something we don't yet understand. And history has shown us, again and again, that technology outpacing wisdom is a recipe for catastrophe. In the quiet corners of theoretical physics, Discussions are beginning to shift. Questions once dismissed as science fiction are now whispered in serious tones. If quantum computers can simulate quantum systems perfectly, could they simulate us? Could Willow or its successor model the human brain, the ecosystem, entire civilizations? Could it predict us? We don't have answers. What we have are questions growing louder. Because this isn't just about circuits and qubits. It's about the moment, the crossing point between human potential and the unknown. And every so often in history, we arrive at such a threshold. The splitting of the atom, the decoding of DNA, the birth of the internet. But this, this feels different. This feels like standing at the shore of an ocean that has no map. And for the first time, we've built a ship. Google's Willow isn't just the next chapter in computing. It's the first sentence in a new book, one that might redefine the rules not only of technology, but of reality itself. And somewhere, just beyond our comprehension, we sense that something is beginning to stir. A presence not malevolent, but vast, ancient even, as if the quantum realm has been waiting for someone or something to finally listen, not to break it, not to bend it, but to join it. And that's where we are now. Not at the end, but at the very beginning of something that may redefine life, thought, and truth itself. Willow is still humming, still calculating, still learning, and we, for better or worse, are now passengers on this quantum voyage. Where it takes us, no one knows. But one thing is certain, we've already stepped through the gate.